Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. It's Wednesday, and all of our guests today in the wake of the Canucks lost last night at Rogers Arena, Game 6 Friday in Nashville, brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. C A Dan Hamish is going to join us now. Pride of Smithers, ex Canucks defenseman, ex Predators defenseman, co-owner of a junior team, the Prince George Cougars, doing very well in the uh, Western Hockey League playoffs. Uh, Dan retired in 2020 after his second stint yep. uh, with uh, Nashville, and of course we all remember uh, Dan from his uh, time with the Vancouver Canucks, including uh, the 2011 playoffs. Dan Hamish, thanks for joining us, sir. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Uh, no problem. Uh, you're, I know you watched the game last night. What was your, your takeaway from a, a battle between two of your former teams? Yeah, it was uh, pretty exciting to watch. You could see the Preds do not want their season to end. They were uh, fighting hard and, uh, yeah, managed to get that late one in. I mean, both teams are are playing well. You can just see, uh, I mean, it's the shots are quite low, but there's just such a commitment to the defensive side of the game and, and blocking shots and goalies are playing good. So yeah, it's entertaining. What's it like for you to watch Dan? How much do you miss it? Yeah, the playoffs is always exciting. And, uh, you know, both buildings, they got to play playoff games in and both buildings have great atmospheres. It's uh, neat to see the Canucks bringing back the U2 uh, song to start the game and the towels going. It's, uh, yeah, those were some pretty special moments uh, back in uh, 2011 when we had our longer run and I mean, any of those playoff games back in yeah, Vancouver. As a former D-man, uh, Dan, i got to ask you this. What do you, what do you think of Nikita Zadorov? He seems like something special. Yeah, uh, well, that was quite the goal he scored last night. I and mean, uh, kind of had that feeling when he started chugging through the neutral zone that something was going to happen. You don't see him up there too often, but man, what an effective player he is. I mean, he uses his size and his body so well, and uh, he's intimidating for other teams to play against. Uh, other players, he's, I think, yeah, was it in uh, Nashville when they had the the comeback there? He was uh, he was the guy yeah. standing in front yep. of the yes. net. I mean, if he, he plants himself there, it's going to be tough for UC Saros to see around him. And if you're a defender, it's not a guy you're really going to waste too much energy trying to move out of there because you're you're not going to do it. you you just got to kind of work around him. So Canucks are using him well. He's playing well. It's, uh, it's neat to see. Well, Dad, I want to ask you about another defenseman of Vancouver. Quinn Hughes today was named a uh, nominee for the Har- or sorry, the Norris uh, finalist today. Your your thoughts on this kid? He has just been absolutely phenomenal since the day he arrived in Vancouver. Yeah, he sure has. It's uh, it's amazing to watch. Um, I've watched more Canuck games now this past week with the the Preds Canuck series going on and all the games broadcasted. It's uh, it's really a, his skating ability is just blows me away how he can move around that ice so quickly he's got the hands he's got the brain and it all comes together and um yeah and he's just had a such an incredible year and happy to see um him have that success um you know being named captain this year there's extra pressures there's extra responsibilities that come along with that and it's uh really neat to see it hasn't affected his play at all Dan, I, it's okay. been... It's actually it, made it better. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of success uh, success in this city since 2011, and you've seen a lot of lean years for the Canucks not making the playoffs. How how, how exciting a BC boy uh, to see Vancouver turn it around this year? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been probably too long, and I think uh, I'm happy for Canucks fans that they uh, have got to follow and watch a winning team all throughout the year. And... Uh, you know, I think early on people were wondering if if it was going to last, and but the team has just continued to kind of get better through that through the year too. I think Rick Tockett's had a real big impact on the team, the players that they've brought in. It's it's a well-rounded group. They're well coached, and um, yeah, I think it works kind of both ways. It's exciting for the fans. It's also exciting for the players to be back in the playoffs and and playing in front of a, a lively building. Uh, how often do you think of twenty eleven, Dan? Uh, quite often, probably more during playoff time. Uh, a lot of great memories from from that run, even though it didn't end the way we wanted to. It was, uh, yeah, such an exciting couple months. Um, I've seen 
there's been some games that have been replayed uh, on TV and uh, I kind of got hooked into watching it again. It was, uh, yeah, really great group of guys and uh, special experience. We had Ryan Kessler on uh, recently, and he, like every other Canuck we get on from that era, says things would have been different if Dan Hamuse didn't get injured in, in game one. Do you feel the same way? It's hard to say. Uh, it was devastating for, for me to um, go out of the playoffs at, at that point in the in the finals. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it was a combination of that. And then Aaron Rome came in and he got his suspension there on his hit on, uh, on Horton. And probably the combination of the two kind of just really sh juggled the defensive pairings around from what we had been used to. And, um, yeah, it may have had, it may have had an effect on the series, but yeah, it's, uh, tough to look back on how it ended, but, uh, it's also one of the highlights of, of my career. I have to say that, uh, and this is a positive thing, there's a 2011 vibe in Vancouver uh, right now, even though it's uh, just the first round. Hey, off off the uh, subject, uh, Dan, what's it like co-owning, and it's been a while now, but co-owning a major junior hockey team, Prince George Cougars? Well, this year it's been a lot of fun. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the team's been doing great. Um, it's been, uh, you know, it's it's – Fairly similar stories, actually, with the Canucks. The Cougars yeah. kind of had some uh, glory years uh, a ways back, and um, where the fans were it was sold out buildings all the time. We had consistently good teams, and we went through a, quite a long stretch where that wasn't the case. Um, playing in emptier buildings uh, for the players, and, um, and and part of it was just the product on the ice wasn't uh, as good as it had been in, in the years past, and. Um, our staff there, Mark Lamb, he's our head coach and GM, and Jim Playfair, Carter Rigby, our coaches, they, they've just done a really great job with the team. Eric Brewer's had a, a big role um, kind of on the ownership side on the, on the for the hockey ops and, and putting this, this group together. And, yeah, I mean, right from the scouts, the, the, the players that they've drafted and the development that the coaches have done, um, we've had a really great season. We're a top team in the West this year, and – uh, it's been fun for the fans in Prince George because the buildings are full, have been sold out through the playoffs. And again, it's a great atmosphere for the players to experience and exciting for the fans to experience good hockey and that atmosphere in, in the building. Hey, Dan, uh, I wanted to ask you about your journey. You didn't go in the Bantam draft, and now you're seeing these kids go to academies. Uh, parents are spending 30, 40, 50 grand a year. Talk about the players that are coming through the ranks now as opposed to when you were playing minor hockey. Yeah, it's different now than uh, when I came through. Um, you know, I think the academies can be a really good thing. They, uh, you know, you kind of bring all that high-level skill around the province into, you know, a few teams, and you get some very highly competitive games and a league through the year. I think the thing that probably worries me the most is I don't know that I would have made it yeah, uh, in, yeah. in today's world because my family wouldn't have had the income to afford, not even close to be able to afford to <laughs> something like this, even in the dollars of 25 years ago. Um, and so I, my worry is that, you know, kids that grow up, you know, middle or lower class on the income scale that they might not get that opportunity mm -hmm. and may fall through the cracks and you don't know, who those players might be that, that you're kind of missing. So I really hope that the financial thing isn't a barrier for, for kids, but uh, it's, it's tough when all the good players do go to those academies. Yeah, I, I agree, Dan. Both Rick and I are involved in, in minor hockey. I think they might miss out on late bloomers uh, yeah. as well. Uh, one more thing. Are you, are you, you're still in Smithers? You're back in Smithers. Have I got that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Smithers, I grew up here. And yeah. then uh, – between every hockey season, we always came back to Smithers uh, for off seasons, and then uh, 2020, when I retired, we uh, we set up here permanently. So Rick and I both worked up north. I was in Dawson Creek. He was in Fort St. John, and you have to live up there, I think, to to, to know how great it is. Um, what can you tell us about what the lifestyle in Smithers? You don't see a lot of players going back to a small northern town like that. No, yeah, people often wonder why, and uh, but. There's just so much to do, uh, things that we really enjoy here. The outdoor uh, opportunities are kind of second to none. It might, mm -hmm. uh, might be kind of like the north version of, of Squamish in a way where there's yeah. 
we got great, great skiing and hiking, camping, biking, um, fishing, hunting, like all those. If you're into the outdoors, it's, it's a fantastic place to live. And we have family up here too. We have a good community from all those years of coming back in the summers. So we thought it'd be a great place to, to raise a family. And, uh, yeah, so far we've, we've got a great community of, of friends here and really enjoy the lifestyle. Dan, can't thank you enough. Uh, all, all the best. And we, again, we really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on guys. Good you bet.